one, you know, he's a behemoth of a guy, big old, you know, big old guy. So he's sitting there like getting up inside of their, their armpits and twisting their scapulae and like working the muscles into the right, look. like you wouldn't believe it, okay? It looks terrifying. Folks, he's working on, you ought to see the changes. Like in an hour of therapy, man. In an hour of therapy, the guy's like, oh, this is all I got. And then at the end, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah that works pretty good. That works pretty good. There it all goes. I already there it all goes. Excuse uh, me. We're going to let you knock it out. <laughs> Probably so why. So you're doing all this work to these folks. Uh, and part of it is you've got this hammer, man. And it'll, like, get a bone and it'll work it into the right location using the freaking hammer. Blow your mind. Blow your mind. These movements are how we judge general joint Right? If somebody's got like a weird hitch in the location, be it mechanical or muscular or what have you, we can use these movements and the degrees to which they move for us to better understand how to general point out. Are we together on this? We use this. We use it on a daily basis in certain medical fields. So gliding movements, things kind of gliding past one another, angular movements like flexion and extension, all right, uh, decreasing angles, increasing angles. Uh, did I do? Yes, it's perfect. Uh, abduction and adduction. Again, abduction raising the arms, abduction lowering the arms. You can do the same thing with the legs, all right? And then pronation, supination, which we've already described. But to pronate is to put the thumbs down, to supinate is to bring the thumbs back around, palms up, soup, not for soup, all right? So we use these concepts. We use these concepts. Now, here is a killer. Uh, description of the knee. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to run you through the parts of the knee and kind of talk to you about what they do. Uh, so it's all there. It's all there. Let's talk about the ligaments and things. Yeah, I got 12 plus Bercy. Uh, uh, I said 16 in class tonight. It's 12 plus. I, I'm sure I've read 16 somewhere. Uh, let's talk about these, these joints, and, or these ligaments, I should say. All right, <clears throat> away we go. Here is a right leg, all right? Here's a right leg. And on this right leg, there are four major ligaments that we need to describe, all right? Uh, and I'm gonna get to those second, I think. Let's do the easy one in the front first. So what is this? That's patella. What kind of bone is patella? A flat bone. It is a knee bone. Flat bone. Flat bone. Uh, better term, it's in a tendon, so what is it? Sesmoid, who's talking? Yes, good job. Sesmoid bone. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. Hey, moving on. Sesmoid bone. So this is the tendon coming down from what's called your, your quadriceps. In reality, it's the tendon of the rectus femoris, the big muscle right in the middle of your quadriceps, but it's commonly just called the quadriceps tendon. Everybody with me? Like mm -hmm. All these, these are quads. Do we agree? Yes. All right. So this is the tendon coming off the rectus femoris. It comes down and connects to the patella. Now, muscle to bone, it makes this a tendon, quadriceps tendon. Do we agree? Yes. And then it goes bone to bone. And what is bone to bone? It's a ligament, okay? And that ligament we call the patellar ligament, all right? Now you'll oftentimes hear this whole thing just called the quadriceps tendon, okay? But it depends on what book you read. In my opinion, this is bone to bone, so that's the patellar ligament, okay? What do I call it here? Patellar ligament, good, we're making progress. All right, <clears throat> so as your quads flex, it calls you to kick your leg out, and that would actually be extension, okay? Flexion would be done by the muscles under here pulling this down. Extension would be done by the quads kicking the leg back out. Everybody with me? Mm-hmm. All right, now then, there are the four major ligaments of the knee. These are called the collateral ligaments and the cruciate ligaments, of which there are two each. Let's do the collaterals first, because they're easy. All right, this is the right leg, and that's the plate off the bottom right there. On this right leg, would that be lateral or medial? Lateral. lateral. So that's the lateral collateral ligament, and this one must be the medial. medial collateral ligament. Now, what these do is they keep the leg from rocking side to side. If you grab your finger, it's basically your knee. Okay, that's pretty much your knee in reality. Same shape, so I mean, it's all there. You try to tweak it from right to left, you feel it get tight on the sides. Mm -hmm. All right, you can feel it. That is those collateral ligaments. So if you kind of grab your leg and go side to side with it, in another world where this was okay, in a lab, we would just throw people up on a table and have your lab partners grab you by the leg and twist it side to side. That has changed. Um, 
it oh, clearly well. wants to be on the ground. So That's what it wants to be. Fate. It's fine. I'm not chancing fate twice. <laughs> so it wants to be on the ground? Then it's ground. Uh, so the collateral ligaments keep the leg from going side to side. Everybody with me on this? Mm -hmm. Collateral ligaments. Then there are the cruciate ligaments. All right, cruciate ligaments. So there's an anterior cruciate ligament, which everybody loves to hate. We call it the... Good. Then there's a posterior cruciate ligament. You can take a wild guess as to where these are found. Anterior means in the... Front. Posterior. Good. I take the whole knee and I turn it around backwards so you can see it. The posterior cruciate ligament is this. All of this, these two little shreds here, that's all PCL. And what the PCL does is it keeps the leg from hyperextending. So if you kind of take your foot, ooh, I can feel that. Oh, man. You kind of give it a push backwards, you can feel, or alternatively, take your finger and kind of hyperextend. You can feel that ligamentation on the back of this get tight. Right? That is the posterior cruciate ligament on this knee here. And then there's the ACL. All right? We don't go side to side. We can't hyperextend. But the knee must bend like this, right? So the ACL is a weird one. Uh, the ACL comes in, see it right in the middle? All right, connects to that um, tibial prominence. Give me time. We'll get to there in a minute. Connects to the tibia at the top there. Hang on, I gotta friggin' click through here for 10 seconds. Tell me I got a tibia on this lecture. No tibia on this lecture, that's a lie to me. Anyways, where the ACL connects, it'll come to me in a minute. Like the other day, I can remember scapula. No. All right, here we go. So you can see the ACL kind of connecting right in the middle there. You see it? Right, it goes right to the middle of the knee, right at the center core. It's called an intercapsular ligament because it's inside the capsule of the knee itself. It's not on the capsule, it's in the knee physically. You see it right there in the middle? Like right in the middle, right there. Right in the middle, it's got the intercapsular ligament. Everybody with me? Right, intercapsular, intercapsular ligament. And then on the back of the knee, if I turn this thing around, you can see where it kind of starts. It's right at the top, right? Right at the top, right there. So what the ACL does, is it keeps the knee from shimmying off of its base like this, all right? So what the ACL does is it keeps the knee from pulling off of its base. So again, here's your knee. Can't go right and left because it's collateral. Can't hyperextend because it's posterior, cruciate. But it must bend. But what it can't do is shift off of its base. It can't, everybody looking? Can't pop off this way because the ACL is there to prevent that. That's why this is a really common sporting injury. Somebody stops, somebody chops them in the legs, shifts off his face, torn ACL. That, that's how this works. Right? Why doesn't the ACL heal? Let me try again in English. Why doesn't the ACL heal, there we go, when it's torn? You don't heal an ACL. It's not a lot of blood flow. That's true, there's not a lot of blood flow to it. If you look at an ACL, I mean, it is white as the day is long. I mean, it is. Very, very, very translucent, silvery edge, meaning collagen fiber. No blood flow. Everybody with me? Yes. So the only way it gets nourishment to stay alive is from the snow globe when we sort of bring things through. So very little to no blood flow. Further, if you tear this thing to two pieces, is there anything to realign it? It just floats around in there, man. Just floats around in that joint capsule. And worse than that, uh, when things are floating around in the joint capsule, every time you step, the knee is kind of squishing them. And as it squishes them, it releases inflammatory chemicals. If you tear your ACL, by the time you go to the doctor to have it checked on, most of the ACL has been eaten away by macrophages, white blood cells in your body. It's pretty much gone already. So there is no healing it, all right? So what do we do? We replace it. Yeah, man, we crack that sucker open and throw a new one in. So hold that thought. Let's get to that in a second. Let me describe meniscus one more time, and then we'll move on. Do you not like my descriptions? Does it sound terrible? Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen a lot of stressed out people when I give these lectures. I've had some terrible times explaining this stuff to folks. They're like, no, and I'm like, what's the matter? And they're like, I gotta go to the doctor this weekend to have this day. I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, we don't want to tell so you. so harsh to describe these things and the ways I describe them. Or imagine me, whenever I'm like injuring my back or something, I'm like, what I've done. Yep. I don't want to go. I don't want to go get this check. I don't want to hear about my discs. I enjoy I talking know. about how I didn't play sports and thus I have healthy joints. And now here I am with a disc issue. 
All right, here we go. Meniscus, lateral meniscus, medial meniscus. What's meniscus made of? What kind of cartilage? What kind of cartilage is your meniscus made of? We talked about this two hours ago. Hyaline cartilage lines the ends of the bones, but the fiber cartilage is what makes up the meniscus. All right. So remember, the meniscus are these little cups. All right, little cups where the condyles of the uh, femur sort of sit on top of the tibia. These little cups. You don't have to have them, but they help. All right? They help. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Fiber cartilage. Should I ask them again? One more. So what is meniscus made of? Fiber. Is there hyaline in there too? Yes, on the outside. Better believe it. So the fiber cartilage just makes up meniscus which some synovial joints have, synovial joint, freely moving, diarthrotic, uh, but not all. Good. Mm. Just throw points at you guys so you can tell me who that is. Woo! Uh, Lord have mercy, he's terrifying. Back in is that like, Randy Couture? No. Back I in the late tell. 90s, early 2000s. Boys oh. Gracie? Vanderlei Silva. Vanderlei Silva. Terrifying human. That is a terrifying. I wouldn't tell you most of them are terrifying. He's Moving on. Uh, you'll see it's got his leg raised up in the air there. Why is that? He's taking, a, he's taking a kick. And he's taking a kick right in the leg. But if I'm sitting there planted and you kick me in the side of the leg, Keontae, man, I'm going to blow out some ligaments. L ligaments don't like going sideways. Everybody with me on this? Mm -hmm. They don't like going sideways. You can see the difference in size of the collaterals here, you know, comparatively. Like this one's real weak comparatively. Uh, you don't like side blows to the knees. It's a good way to blow out a lot of these ligaments, meniscus, what have you. Imagine this meniscus is relatively firm and you kind of really shove it sideways. It tears. Torn meniscus is a real thing. Do we all agree with this? Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. Side, side blows, lateral blows are real bad. Uh, rapid directional changes. These are all ways of taking care of our ligaments here. Uh, you've probably heard the term sprain, tear. Yes, this kind of thing. Okay, so a sprain... Ligament, sprained ligament. Normally, the way we phrase this is a sprain is where the ligament's been stretched a little and some of the fibers are kind of busted up, but it, it's still intact and it'll heal. That's a sprain. A tear, it's in two pieces and it may be more work to get it put back together. If you're torn ACL, you're replacing that ACL. Do we agree? Yes. If you can strain things all day long, you're going to hurt and suffer as a result, but it's going to heal back over time. But a tear, you got other problems. And it's kind of the same story with cartilage. Again, what color is cartilage? Why? Oh man, that silvery white color. Whenever we do our first like fun dissection, you're gonna see it and you're gonna like, I get it. Like you've been saying this this whole freaking time. Silvery white, what does that mean? I totally see it now. Like cartilage has a look to it. It's wild. Uh, same thing with, with um, ligaments, tendons, too, for that matter. Uh, so they are avascular. What does that mean? No blood. No blood flow. No blood flow. And that means that they heal slowly, if at all. Okay, cartilage damage either is going to heal very slowly or not at all. Um, and that's how this works. Yeah, which is why I'm hoping my back will get better and better and better. And I would like to think that it is, but I'm also very hopeful in most things. Uh, loose bodies. Now, I kind of mentioned this a second ago. The nature of it is as follows. Normally, when cartilage tears, there will be little bits that are broken off. These little bits of cartilage. Uh, you guys remember the Princess and the Pea story when you were a kid? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. It's kind of like that. You've got a little bit of cartilage broken loose, and it's sort of floating around inside the joint cavity, or even a piece of ligament kind of flopping around in there in the joint cavity. Every time you step, they release inflammatory chemicals. Those inflammatory chemicals end up tearing up the inside of the knee's cavity or any joint cavity for that fashion. Uh, so our loose bodies or bits of whatever that have broken loose in there uh, will release all these inflammatory chemicals and macrophages come in and just tear into the cartilage. I don't care what it is, they're just tearing into it. So when you've got a loose body, something floating around inside of the knee or anywhere for that matter, we just think about knees because they're, you know, what most folks damage, uh, you're going to end up with osteoarthritis you don't get to take care of because the body's going to tear up all the cartilage that's there you're going to wind up with bone-to-bone -bone contact, and it's never coming back after that. So knees are something we need to have addressed. Joint, joint issues are something to be addressed whenever they come up. Yeah, we've already talked about dislocations. All right, what kind of surgery is this? The scope, arthroscopic, right, to scope a joint. 
And what you're going to have here is a uh, irrigation system, basically, to inflate the knee, and a small camera to see, and then a tool coming in from the other side so that you can do work inside of the knee. So look, look at this. What color is it? It's white. Because what does it not have? Blood no blood. blood. All right, no blood flow. Do you see the loose body here where it's been torn loose? Yeah, I mean, that's literally what's happened here. You can see the loose body there. Here you can see some sutures that have been that have been put in place on some meniscus, kind of help hold together tibia, femur, part of the meniscus. Uh, here is what the tear would look like otherwise. Here are some brand new polymers we're using to go in and replace meniscus. And this is an ACL repair. Shall we discuss the old ACL repair? Uh, that doesn't look good. All right, when you have an ACL repair, what we do is we go in and harvest a piece of ligament or tendon from somewhere else in the body. Where does it often come from? Yeah, sure. yeah man, I've, I've heard that one. I've seen a little bit of uh, patellar ligament taken before, uh, a, a variety of places we can do this. To be frank with you, I am pretty surprised we don't use polymers at this stage. Like, why wouldn't you? Anyway, neither here nor there. I am not an arthroscopic surgeon. I bet there's a reason. Moving on. <laughs> uh, so what we do is we drill a hole straight through the knee zip zip all the way through one end to the next and we uh, use a couple of these these very super special polished titanium screws that bone like okay so basically the idea here is you put the screw into the bone and after a short period of time the bone kind of grows in and around it and encapsulates it to hold it in place everybody with me mm -hmm. we like titanium for this specific purpose uh, normally the immune system can't sense it whereas iron's constantly releasing or releasing ions and stuff so the body knows it's there inflammatory response. Okay. Uh, so the nature of this is that we, we put these screws in with the ligament attached to it and then we can tension them, bend the leg, tension them, bend the leg, basically customize the tension of the knee uh, around what is necessary and then sew the person up, call them a day. You know, it's, it's done and done. After a few months it'll heal up pretty good and normally you hear a lot of surgeons say it'll be stronger after the surgery than it was before because they can custom tension everything and get it exactly the way they want it. Work for charm. I've known lots of athletes with ACL repairs and they all seem to come back like a champ. Uh, a friend of mine, well, a guy I know, uh, he played for Tampa after he had his ACL fixed in high school. So he went to college with fixed ACL, went through pro football with fixed ACL, and was good. I mean, obviously, played, played pro ball. So yeah, yeah, ACL they are pretty nice as compared to what we were discussing earlier. So hip repairs and stuff like that. Yeah, it'll do. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about arthritis. Nice back. All right, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and gout. <clears throat> Man, have we been talking about osteoarthritis this whole time? I feel like we have. This is uh, facts of life. You live long enough, you're gonna have osteoarthritis. It's just you know, it's just how it goes. Uh, so as we age. We are constantly moving around and doing the things that we do, and we're releasing inflammatory chemicals to our cartilage. And over time, the replacement of the cartilage slows down to a point that you end up with bone to bone contact, and that's osteoarthritis. It hurts, it's painful. Uh, the body starts laying down excess bone in the areas where there's bone to bone contact. So, grandma's got these big old knuckles. Anybody ever seen this? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Classic osteoarthritis, man. Classic osteoarthritis. Um, you just, this is a fact of life. As we age, you know, it's gonna happen, so prepare yourselves. If you live long enough, you're gonna have osteoarthritis. It's just like, again, grandma on her cracky knees. Classic osteoarthritis, man. Uh, rheumatoid. Rheumatoid is an autoimmune disease. What is rheumatoid arthritis? It is an autoimmune disease. Do we agree? Yes. This is where the immune system attacks typically the snowfield membranes, and as the immune system attacks the snowfield membrane, it basically turns into sandpaper. You ever seen any movies? We we have you know medications we can use to decrease the effects of this leveling, uh, but it's no fun. It's not fun. Uh, so what's happening here is when you have the uh, nodal membrane breakdown, you're going to have rubbing against the bones, and over time it's going to tear off all the cartilage and damage it to a point that the bones kind of misalign, and then they sort of ossify in misaligned nature. Okay, especially if this is untreated. So I, like I had a professor, she was amazing, Dr. Adams, I may have mentioned her to you guys before, she taught anatomy of phys. 
and like this hand was like all curled over and it's kind of stuck in place like this. And it's from rheumatoid. Okay, it's totally rheumatoid arthritis. She was like, yeah, I gotta go into the doctor's office and they'll have to you know, pronate as much as I can and supinate as much as I can. It's their, their way of measuring our joints. And I was like, oh, light bulb. That's how this works. And that's why we're learning about all this. That is why, folks, that's why. Yeah, key point, autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, facts of life. Yeah. Don't, don't ask me the question either, because I'm not. I'm they not clearly know more than I do about this. They've been to lots of medical school, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking like that would be the case for her to have like these other issues starting like to inflame if it's something else. Like, that's okay, look, look, look. Don't ask me to. Don't bust up in there and be like, hey, you know what, my anatomy professor, oh, Mr. <laughs> Hopper, he <laughs> says y'all are mistaken. Because that ain't the way this works. But uh, there's a famous phrase in the car world, okay? When you've gone through and you rebuild something and you, you replace and whatever, then you go to crank the car and it don't start now, it's something you did. It ain't something random. The chance of it being something random, pretty limited. It ran, you changed the alternator, now it doesn't run. Probably something you did, all right? If you worked on the knees and you're augmenting the, the general, you know, Alignment, the geography, not geography, geometry, yeah, of how the, the joints articulate with one another, and then she's got her hips hurting. That makes perfect sense to me. Now it's her back now, it's going like that. makes even more sense to me, but don't ask me because I don't know. Is that a fair no, no, comment? No, no, with, with those systems that are triggered by any of our immunity. Sure, it's possible. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, then there's gout. Uh, ladies, congratulations. Yet again, I feel like. Uh, gout's really a male thing for the most part. Uh, something about how we accrue certain uh, nucleic acids. So, something about how males accrue certain nucleic acids. So when you eat foods that are really rich, um, think like preserved meats. If you're chowing down a prosciutto every night, you know killer cheeses, you're like tearing into some Pavarti, like really rich foods is what I'm saying. Deli sandwiches are the classics of this, but normally they just say red meat, but deli sandwiches are where it's at. I think mm -hmm. it's purine nucleic acids, but don't quote me on that, okay? Uh, foods that are rich in purine, they will cause a buildup of um, uric acid inside the body. And when you have built up uric acid, the kidneys aren't keeping up with it as well as they should, you can have that uric acid in the end of, mm, begin to crystallize, there we go, that's the words I wanted, in the order I wanted them. Um, they begin to crystallize and form crystals of uric acid in joint cavities. Yet again, princess and the P, you understand what I'm getting at here, you get a crystal of uric acid formed up in a joint cavity, how's it gonna feel when you're moving around? Like crap. It's gonna hurt. Now, where does this typically pop up? Uh, I've seen feet. Big toe, it's called out gout. That's where it tends to pop up for the first time. You get this weird big toe issue, you're like, oh man, I think it's that thing. Kills me. Oh man, it's hurt so bad. It's like having a little rock inside of the joint. You know when a rock goes up in your shoe. How you're getting that is that is in the joint cavity itself. All right. This is some kind of ridiculous extreme. Normally you don't see this. All right. Normally you don't see it. We're talking about small microscopic crystals. They're sharp edges. Sharp edged. There we go. Uh, and they cause all sorts of pain when you're moving around because they're tearing into the cartilage and leading to damage. And anytime you're releasing in like bradykinin or something in the joint cavity. Hurt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Now, there are also foods that sort of help with this for whatever reason. Uh, normally, anything that's uh, red, ripe fruit, like the classic example, are uh, uh, black cherries. For whatever reason, they really help with gout, I'm told. 
Uh, and I've had students write this up before and bring it in, and there's evidence. There's good evidence that says that certain red red fruits, probably antioxidant capacities they're in, uh, help us deal with uh, suffering from cancer. Mm. So that's how that works. Mm. Uh, let's go. Let's take lap time. Lap time. If I had all the time in the world, 